Welcome to the podcast where we take a deep dive into the stories behind construction business leaders. We will share how they got started, how they found success, and the lessons learned along the way. I'm your host, Eric Fortenberry. Welcome to Builder Stories. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Matt Blood from Paragon Tile Installation. They're located in Cumberland, Rhode Island. Excited to have you on today, Matt. Welcome to Builder Stories. Oh, thanks, Eric. Thanks for having me today. Excited to be here. Yeah. So why don't you uh, just give us a little background, uh, you know, about yourself and, uh, you know, what your company does and and all the, 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 the usual stuff like that. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I am a certified tile installer, as you mentioned, based out of Cumberland, Rhode Island. Uh, Paragon Tile Installation is the name of my company. We've been, I've been in business as Paragon Tile since uh, about February of 2022. Uh, took Had a sales job before that, that I took a little sabbatical from tile. Uh, but before that, I got started in the industry in about 2001. So been in tile for a while. Awesome. So what How'd you originally get into uh, and, and, and to doing tile work? Uh, so I started as an apprentice for a good friend of mine, um, worked under him for a while, and then he took a job as a sales rep in the industry and then about 2011 or 12. And that's when I really kind of went headstrong into it myself. And do you, uh, so, so right now you're, you're basically running the entire thing. I mean, obviously your, your sales background probably is, has helped you as an entrepreneur, um, but are you still doing some of the installation yourself or do you have a team? Nope. So at this point it is all me, uh, kind of doing everything, uh, wearing every hat. Uh, this was a bit of a side project for a while, uh, earlier this year, March of this year, I retired from a full-time firefighter position. Okay. So I've been kind of leading this charge to build a company, uh, really this year. Awesome. So I look forward to hiring on some folks and whatnot. I just need to get out of my own way to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you're basically a solo uh, owner operator, uh, just basically wearing all the hats right now. It sounds like. That's right. Well, I got to tell you, I don't miss those days. It's uh, it's, it's nice to have a team of, of people. So, you know, I, I can, uh, I can imagine how uh, excited you might be to work your way towards that. Yeah, I've got uh, eyes on that prize and you know, hopefully we get there sooner than later. So, so what was the, uh, you know, what, what was the actual kind of catalyst that, that really helped you, you know, make that final decision that, you know, you wanted to go out on your own, you wanted to start a business. Like, you know, I, I hear all the time how daunting, you know, that, that can be for people. And sometimes they may spend, you know, months or years, you know, thinking about doing it, but like, what was that final thing that just pushed you over the edge? Sure. So honestly, finding, uh, listening to podcasts like this and finding, uh, honestly, Tom Reber and the contractor fight, uh, back in 2020 was probably where the, the spark was lit. Um, I got into his paid battleground group, uh, beginning of last year when that first started as a battleground and really got the confidence and knowledge to know what I needed to do to, to kind of do my own thing from there. Sure. What, what, what would you say has been the, uh, the hardest thing about starting a new business? Uh, doing the work I don't like to do. <laughs> the business stuff, the numbers stuff, uh, all that good, good stuff is probably the hardest for me just because I need to make time for it. You know, I can find time to work with my hands all I want to because I enjoy that part of it. Um, but getting into doing this the business end of it is what's been most difficult for me, which is really the first place I need to hire. Yeah. Now that uh, makes total sense. I mean, you know, again, a lot of, a lot of people will come off the tools into the business and, you know, it, it can be very overwhelming for sure to, uh, to have to kind of learn a whole new uh, set of skills and, and, and get that understanding. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's something that, you know, you've already taken, you know, those first steps to, you know, become part of different groups, you know, battleground, you know, coaching groups, organizations where you can surround yourself with people who've got a lot of great experience can be, you know, can be a great, uh, you know, great, great, great asset to have on your team. And, you know, obviously you've got, you know, you got job tread, you got tools that will help you uh, to do that as well. I mean, is there, is there something though in particular about the numbers? Like, is it, you know, pricing your jobs? Is it, uh, you know, you know, doing the job costing, like, is it understanding the, the, the overall, 
you know, gross profit or your overhead, your net income? Like, are there, are there certain aspects that like you still find very challenging? Um, honestly, the biggest challenge with it all is after kind of being in the field all day, just making the time for it, you know, yeah. we've kind of, I, I understand it a lot better now than I did before. Uh, Chubb Shed certainly makes it a lot easier. The more I dive into the program, the easier I realize this can be, it doesn't have to be so daunting. Um, but it's really just me again, getting in my own way and yeah. needing to make the time for it. So, so what do you think it's going to take for you to be able to, you know, start hiring people and, would, <laughs> and, and, and who would be the first person? Like, would it be, you know, a salesperson or would it be uh, you know, a project manager or someone you know, doing the actual field work? No, that's a great question. Um, honestly, it won't be sales because I really do enjoy that part of it. I enjoy yeah. that more than just about anything at this point. <laughs> I think first would be probably a virtual assistant or something to help with numbers and things of that nature, run the back end. Second would be to hire field crews uh, so that I can focus my time on sales in the business and going to different industry events, meetings of that nature, and becoming more and more involved with that as well. So, yeah, no, that, I think uh, those are the first two goals. That definitely makes sense. I mean, I, you know, I typically find that people sort of gravitate to, you know, either the, the sales side or the operations, uh, you know, execution side and, uh, you know, certainly uh, given your sales background, I, I, I could have guessed you were going to go, uh, go go the sales route. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's so important that you make sure that you build a great team where you can have both sides, you know, of the house covered well. Um, is that uh, is 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 there, you know, anything about the sales process like that, that 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 you didn't realize or that maybe you've learned along the way, you know, through battleground or through, you know, kind of your own lessons that 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 you think you wish you would have known getting into it? Uh, honestly, probably the biggest thing, just learning how to communicate with people. Yeah. And learning how to communicate and listen is huge. Do you ha well, t tell us a little bit more about your sales process? Like, what does it look like? You know, you get, you get a new lead, maybe, you know, from your website, from referral and then, and then what happens? Uh, from there, we basically, we kind of follow a process of getting some photos, having a good conversation with potential clients, what they're looking for, how we can help if we're a fit for them and honestly if they're a fit for what for us for what i like to do and that sort of thing um from after that conversation if everything sounds great we kind of move forward into a on-site consultation typically and then locking down a job nice and how, how quickly are you you know scheduling out these jobs uh it certainly depends uh working with general contractors or designers they pretty much have all that stuff kind of figured out ahead of time so those are pretty quick uh but if we do go direct to homeowner which we do as well um that can be a, a week or two like to kind of get them locked in or it can be months if they what need to get design figured out and all that stuff so it I really see. depends on the project so you're selling both to you know to, to gcs or direct to the homeowner what, what's the difference between, uh, you know, from, from a sales standpoint, like how, how do you approach those two differently or do you? That's a great, I don't really. So I used to, I certainly used to. Um, but now for me, the way I look at it and to try to put this without sounding arrogant, if it's filling time in my schedule, to me, it makes no difference. Right. So the project has to be the right fit. Yeah. Um, whether it's a GC or a homeowner, there's obviously more, work involved with the homeowner side of it, with going through the process and all, um, only because most of the GCs have worked for, we've worked for some time. So they understand the process. Sure. And are you, uh, are, how are you pricing your jobs? Are you subscribing to, uh, to, to Tom Reber's, uh, 50% gross, uh, 50% margin? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's the goal is on that... every project is 50%. So you've just done that since the beginning and, uh, you know, feel very comfortable doing that? <laughs> Not from the beginning, but uh, <laughs> I feel more and more comfortable with it yeah. now. Uh, yeah. Now Tom's big thing this year is kind of selling unafraid. Right. And we've been doing that as of recently and it's been working out great. We've been certainly able to come closer to that 50% and hit it in some cases too uh, this year than we were able to last year. So that's good. Sure. So tell us a little bit about, so, so you've sold the job now you're getting into, to actually delivering, you know, is that, uh, have you, have you had any challenges in that regard where, 
you know, I mean, obviously, since you're also the salesperson, you know, you got to show up and then deliver the, 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 the service there. I mean, but has there been any, uh, anything, you know, lessons learned or, you know, tough, tough customers that, you know, maybe, uh, m- maybe you wish you would have handled that situation differently? Absolutely. Um, certainly been a learning curve over the last couple of years. Last year, to your point, I sold pretty much everything I possibly could. And not at 50%. Um, I was kind of selling from a scarcity mindset, right? And then when it came to producing it, it was difficult to get it all done. So it was difficult to keep everyone happy. This year's change has been looking at what exactly I think a job will take, adding a little bit of fluff because it's never going to go exactly the way I plan it to be and plan on selling it at that 50%. So I'm not having to chase the next one for money uh, to finish the first one. And that's allowed us to treat our clients the way they deserve to be treated and handle them and see jobs through start to finish without having to worry about rushing to the next one. Sure. And it's been so much better for our clients, much better experience, but also so much better for me. Yeah, I can imagine. Have you ever looked at uh, trying to find, you know, even, you know, subbing out some of the work? Yeah, I do sub out some of the work um, on occasion. I have a couple of guys that I trust to bring in, but that's kind of been the hardest thing for me. Um, I've heard a lot lately, 80% of 100 is good enough. (laughs) Um, That's a hard thing for me to subscribe to. I've kind of built a name that 100% is what you're going to get. So finding folks that deliver what I consider to be 100% has been a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Uh, But we're working through that too. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, just kind of being in, 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 in your shoes, you know, finding some really great subs is, is a good way for you to be able to, you know, kind of slowly back off doing the actual work, you know, finding that, you know, that you got to find the right ones and the right people that you fully trust and you know, they're going to, you know, do a good job for you. But, you know, that, that, that has always been a kind of a good way to sort of try out a couple guys you know, see how it goes. And then the ones that, you know, really perform well, you know, you could look at, you know, basically bringing them on full time or even just, you know, kind of having them as your go-tos, you know, feeding them all the work, you know, that way you're not having to, you know, go hire someone right now full time where you may not be able to, you know, you're, you're a little bit so worried about the cash flow and being able to afford that, you know, but now you can sub out the work. You can still make your profit on top of, you know, getting it done. Um, could, could be a good option for you though. Definitely something I'm looking into for sure. And so from a back office standpoint, I mean, you, you've got, you know, QuickBooks or what, what are you doing to manage, manage all the bookkeeping and, and the accounting side of it? Yeah, it is QuickBooks um, that we're working uh, with now. My wife helps me out with some of that stuff. So uh, um, that kind of keeps me in track, keeps me <laughs> on track. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> How's so, that? Uh, is, is this her, uh, you know, just kind of helping you out on the side or is she, you know, full time with this or how, how's that look? Nope. Helping me on the side. She is a uh, uh, teacher's assistant with a local public school here, which is good. So she's had the same schedule as the kids for quite some time, which has been pretty nice. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of envisioning you, you going to work all day. She's going to work all day. And then you come home around the kitchen table and, and you're uh, doing the books. Is that a. <laughs> yeah, you got it. There's been a Saturday on occasion and it's yeah. just make it work. Right. Yeah. So what's your, you know, kind of what, what's your bigger plan, your, your bigger vision goals for, you know, for, uh, for, for the business, you know, where do you, where do you hope to see it in the next, you know, couple of years, five years, you know, what's kind of that ideal picture look like for you? Great. Yeah. So uh, I would say the next by five years for sure, we'll certainly have a crew or two running. Um, I mentioned earlier that I'm what, the, what's called a certified tile installer. Currently I'm the only one in the state actually setting tile. It's kind of a nationwide certification program. I would ideally have crews that are also certified uh, to be able to do, basically we're shooting for all upper echelon type work, um, being very selective with what we take and actually honestly have been involved in an artisan kind of movement lately as well too. Went to some artisan training this year and are looking to integrate art into tile. So Mm -hmm. I would say within five years, we'll be known for that Mm -hmm. here as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And so is this, you know, kind of where, where in the home are you, are you doing the tile primarily? Is it, you know, the bathrooms, kitchens all over? Yeah, pretty much wherever they need for the most part, but we specialize in custom showers, uh, custom okay. bathrooms, backsplashes, that sort of thing. Is there anything you try to stay away from, or you've learned that, you know, you, you just, 
not a good fit. Don't want to, don't want to do it. Yeah, we certainly are not going to be the guy who does the cookie cutter standard, you know, flip type of homes, that sort of thing. We're more of the second home or, you know, beach home, that sort of thing. That's where we're getting most of our work and doing the best of what we know how to do. Gotcha. So I just got off a, 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 a webinar we did with one of our marketing partners and they were talking a lot about, you know, SEO and, 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 and leads and kind of how they're, you know, kind of their strategies for, for doing that. I mean, what, what, what are you doing from a, from a marketing standpoint, you know, where are your leads coming from? How are they finding you? From a couple of different places. Um, I am not, I'm a tile guy. I'm not a, uh, <laughs> not an electronics guy. So I do have a website. We get leads through the website. Um, when I am consistent enough with my social media stuff, we do get uh, some calls from that. Uh, we also get a lot of referrals and word of mouth stuff. Yeah, that's great. You know, obviously those, those, those referrals and uh, you know, when you can go out there and, and, and have a happy customer, you know, popping up your phone and Hey, you don't mind if we, you know, create a quick little video, you know, just talking about the project, you know, I, I find that those are just invaluable and it, it costs you nothing, you know, to, to collect that information, you know, and if, if they're willing to get on camera and do that for you, um, you know, I assume you, you're, you're asking for uh, like reviews online as well after. Yeah, I'm getting more and more consistent with that as of late, uh, getting, trying to get good reviews from clients uh, and all that. And it's definitely made a difference for us too. Yeah. Do you ever have any repeat customers like where, you you know, maybe, maybe they have you come out and do the shower, uh, you know, the first time, but maybe you come back and you've know, got another project. Like, are you, are you following up with those guys ever? Yep. Yeah, we do get some of that. As a matter of fact, we just, I went out and did punch list stuff on a project today and we've already scheduled in their next bathroom project as well as backsplash for uh, the summer kind of end of second quarter, beginning of third quarter next year. So, yeah, that's great. Well, what, uh, you know, what, what advice would you give to, to other people who are, you know, maybe still on the, on, on the tools or thinking about, you know, starting their business? I mean, you know, any, any kind of advice that you might have for them? Um, yeah, find a group, get involved in a group and do the work. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. Um, I, I ran what I quote unquote a business for so many years without knowing what I was doing, you know, I'd look, Hey, this week there's money in the bank next week. There isn't, you know, get to work harder, all that sort of stuff. Put in so many years doing it that way. Um, knowing that there's people out there wanting to help you and programs out there to help you just look for it, find it and dive in and absorb as much of it as you possibly can. Yeah. Do you go to uh, other, you know, events throughout the year? Like, you know, I think we originally met, I believe at JLC. Is that, uh, I think that's right. That's correct. Yep. Uh, so that's, you know, obviously another great, you know, learning opportunity conference in Rhode Island. I mean, are there other, you know, kind of other things that you do from a, you know, personal and kind of your own professional development that have helped you? Yep. Uh, we just ran into each other, you and I again at Mile High last week. Um, I'm heading to another tile event, uh, next week down in New Orleans. So I, I tend to make sure I attend all of my industry events, uh, the major ones anyhow, um, even if they aren't local. Um, and then as well as events like Mile High and things of that nature, definitely worth the time invested. Yeah, for sure. Any, uh, you know, any, any crazy, uh, you know, any, any crazy stories where, you know, you got into a deal and something just totally unexpected happened and, you know, you had to, you know, had, had, how'd you handle that? You know, any, any sort of, uh, you know, kind of things that, uh, you know, those, those hard knocks where you've, you've taken, uh, taken a, a loss on a job or anything like that. Um, trying to think, I mean, really honestly, biggest loss on a job, I would say was probably last year around that whole scheduling, selling and producing sort of thing things taken way longer than they need to because of just running around putting out the hottest fire, you know, and uh, just, you kind of lose your shirt doing that stuff. You're never <laughs> making any real progress anywhere, which means you're never making any money. Yeah. Um, so that would probably be my biggest learning lesson as far as that goes. How do you, uh, how do you define success? Man, that's a tough one. How do I define success? Uh, what does it look like for you? For me, it looks like, uh, well, 
just getting this business and everything going in the right direction, having the discipline to do the things I don't want to do. Um, being able to support my family solely on this, on my own endeavor, rather than having to rely on a project, I guess that's looking like the start of success. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you'll uh, like, do you see yourself ever branching into, you know, more than just tile, or are you always going to want to just keep it very focused on that? Um, my wife and I have been talking, talking very recently about uh, another direction for this, but it'll definitely always be tile. We'll always be the number one tile installation here in Rhode Island, for sure. That's my goal. That's what we'll always be. But I also have uh, envisioned goals of like creating a lot, like I mentioned, a lot more artwork uh, and kind of selling some of that stuff even all around the country for other installers to install. So yeah. have you ever looked at it? It might be like a second, uh, second venture. <laughs> yeah, well, one, once you get this one going and, uh, you know, certainly, you know, are, are able to kind of take a step back and we've got a team, I think, uh, you know, I can see that for you. Have, have you ever looked at doing like mm -hmm. any uh, like pool tile, uh, you know, or any, anything in the, you know, outdoor, uh, you know, backyards kind of, you know, my, my parents have a really awesome kind of tile, uh, uh, you know, in, in their, uh, their, their, their brick, brick wall kind of fence around their, their property out there. And I don't know, kind of makes me think of what you're talking about, the artisan style, I don't know if you, you've ever gone into that realm. Yep. Yep. We have done, uh, actually last year, last year. Yeah. Last summer we retiled a whole, an old, about 25 year old pool, uh, it was waterline tile and then the whole jacuzzi was all tile. So we kind of refurbished that all new glass tile, beautiful job. Uh, in the end, I, I think they chose a great tile for it. So exterior tile. Yeah. Is a, it's a fun thing. Not too many people do it up here in the Northeast because of snow and whatnot, but yeah. we get, we do get some of those jobs on occasion. Yeah. I mean, what, uh, what, so what, when you wake up every morning, like what, what gets you going? Like what motivates you to get out of bed and, you know, go, go hit that grind. I mean, is it, you know, any, anything in particular? The creative part of this really gets me going, even in a, you know, kind of, standard i guess we could say standard shower there's things that can be done with the tile to just make it the next level and being able to create with my hands and do that sort of thing just that's really what kind of drives me to keep going yeah that's awesome man well it sounds like you got a lot of uh, a lot, lot of great work going um you know obviously it's uh it's, it's the, the the early years are certainly a grind uh you know and it can be tough kind of getting a business off the ground from scratch i mean i you know De definitely done it a couple of times now. And, you know, I, I, I feel for you, but, you know, I got to tell you, you know, as, as you keep growing, you know, being able to just, you know, celebrate those small wins, keep building, keep building, you know, when you get that first hire, man, it's, it's going to be huge for you, you know, being able to just divide and conquer uh, is, 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 is going to be a great day. And, you know, I think that, you know, it sounds like at some point here, hopefully in the near future, you'll be able to, to start doing that, but, you know, definitely, uh, you know, keep, keep it up. You, you've got a lot of a uh, great opportunity. I think, you know, and just having that niche is, is, is a good opportunity too for you to really brand yourself, you know, get those Google reviews, you know, start getting, uh, you know, more of the marketing aspects in there. You know, I think that'll really help kind of build the brand and the presence for you in, you know, in your area. But, you know, uh, I, I, I appreciate your, uh, your willingness to get on and, uh, you know, to, to, to share this. I mean, it's, it's obviously not, you know, if, if it was easy for people to create a business then everybody would do it. Right. Uh, certainly, yeah, that's right. <laughs> certainly, uh, not, not 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 the easiest of things out there to do. And you know, it's uh, it's it's neat though. I, I I appreciate you know your 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 willingness to you know admit like, hey, you know, I know the business side, the numbers are where I need to grow and learn, and you know, basically just committing to you know getting that you know both you know getting systems in place, you know, getting the education, you know, the training with you know with with battleground, you know, those are all the the, the right moves. So. You know, I think there's, uh, you know, bright things ahead for you. You just got to keep it up. And uh, yeah, you know, look forward to to seeing how you keep building the business. Yeah, I appreciate all that. And uh, I really want to thank you for uh, having me on today. This was great. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Matt, for sharing your story. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Builder Stories. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and gained valuable insights that can help you in your journey along the way. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave us a review. And as always, if you or someone you know has a story to share, please contact us at builderstories.com. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Eric Fortenberry, and remember, every builder has a unique story. Keep building yours.